Welcome to A New Life in Christ, a radio ministry of Agape Family Worship Center, located at 4111 Maple View Drive in Beaver Creek, Ohio, where Mark McVeigh is pastor. Our goal is to help you reach your full potential in Christ. Join us now in a service already in progress. The Apostle Paul begins to tell King Agrippa, who was a man of eloquence, he was a man of the Sanhedrin, uh, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, and King Agrippa understood the Apostle Paul even from the time he was a little boy, how he had been trained and equipped and set in order with things concerning Jewry. And uh, it's important for us to know that there are times in our life where that we need to stop and abruptly turn and make an about face of where we began in life to where that God is steering us. I really feel that in my spirit and that God needs to get a hold of us in a way that we will no longer continue in the old path that we once walked in in fear, doubt, and unbelief, uh, but truly to make a new direction, a new port of our life to where that we're going to begin to walk in a different way. Uh, I believe that with all of my heart. There has to be a drastic change overtake us when we begin to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord of our life. Uh, it's, it's not like that, well, you know, one day I shook the preacher's hand and I was saved. I, I feel like that a whole lot of people go through the tradition of joining the church, uh, becoming a part of an organization, and not really focusing their attention on a life-given change through the power of the blood of Jesus. I, I think that's so real in our lives today that we need to focus that to a level that we're not just uh, wanting to fill the pews with folks in order to fill the pews, but that we need, truly need to evangelize and touch the lives of people that are hurting, that are broken, that are being destroyed by the cares of the world, and by the instruction of the enemy. I, I really feel like that we have to come to a greater understanding that Satan has truly come to kill, steal, and destroy, and it's serious business. It really is. I, I believe that when I look into the eyes of teenagers today, I, um, you know, I, I went over this morning to the hospital and I prayed with CJ, and he was in such pain. And uh, he... Uh, was having difficulty going to the bathroom after the anesthesia, and he was just to a point he was in tears, and he would, he couldn't sit still, he couldn't lay still, he couldn't stand up, he was in that much pain, and I reached over and I said, "Let's pray." Do you know that upon praying, in less than three minutes, he was able to go to the bathroom, the pain was gone, and he came out of the bathroom. And he said to his mom, he says, man, prayer really works. But I'm going to tell you that a lot of us have not that kind of faith in prayer. I believe that a lot of folks pray prayers they never expect answered. They get into a habit of just mouthing the words without expecting. And I believe that we need to come into an expectancy of seeing the hand of God move. Now, there are times where the Word of God has spoken to us that there is a there are sicknesses unto death the Word of God talks about, and he said, I would that you didn't pray for that. And he says, and you say, well, why not? He said, because he doesn't want you frustrated. And a lot of times, there, there, are, there are times in my life that I have to go to eight, uh, Romans chapter 8, and I have to begin to pray in the Spirit when my understanding is unfruitful, because you and I will pray a selfish prayer. We will every time. You know that we will. We'll pray our will be done. Do you know that we need to learn how to pray like Jesus prayed when he said, not my will, but thine be done. You see, a lot of times we'll pray our wants, our desires, our fetishes, as our fantasies, all of these things. But really you have to get the heart of God and know what is getting ready to take place. There are people praying right now against all of the economic downturns, and I'm believing God is going to supply regardless. But you can go back to the book of, uh, uh, of Matthew, and you can begin to read, and it says, all of these things must come so that the word of God will be fulfilled. A lot of folks are saying, don't fulfill your word. Don't do what you said you were going to do. Stop it. Don't do it. Don't help me. Listen. 
The reality of this thing is, is we have to get in league with what God is saying and get in agreement with what God is doing in order for us to see our needs met, to see our families changed by the, by the presence of God. But you know what? There's going to be some things happen in the earth. And the word of the Lord says, I pray that you not be soon shaken or troubled in mind or in spirit, but that you continue in the things which you have been affirmed. And that affirmation is knowing the Word of God. I said Sunday morning that we have to come into that place where that we are rightly dividing the Word of truth. The Scripture tells us to study to show ourselves approved. Workmen that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. And here's the, here's the clarity of that, is when we come into the presence of God with an understanding of His Word, we also have to come into the understanding that there are going to be times where that it's not going to be what you necessarily want and desire, but it may be what's best for us. And God knows how to equip us and to work all things together for the good, amen, of those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. And I believe that that's where it comes into the place where the, the, the psalmist David said that he would even give you the desires of your heart, that he would get you to the place where that your heart is so in tune with his heart, where that, you know, I've heard people talk about, I want the heart of God. I, I want the heart of the Lord. I, I believe that he will take us to that place where that our desires become his desires and that we line up with the word of the Lord in such a way that our testimony is of faith. I, I believe that uh, as we begin to understand that, uh, we will see what, it, what took place with uh, the apostle Paul. His name was Saul uh, of Tarshish. But this is what happened. He said, midday, O King Agrippa, in verse 13 of Acts 26, at midday, O King Agrippa, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun. It was shining all around, and, and they that were journeying with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth... I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I think a lot of times what we don't understand is sometimes when things are not just going our way, that it could be that we're out of the will of God. I mean, in reality. I, I, I heard some, someone say when everything's going your way or everything's coming your way, it could be that you're in the wrong lane. <laughs> but in reality, Saul met up face to face with God because he had set out in his heart to persecute the church of Jesus Christ. And he held in the, the cloaks of those that stoned Stephen. And the word of the Lord says that Stephen, as he was being stoned, he looked to the right hand of the Father and Jesus stood up. Because here was a servant that was being martyred for the cause of Jesus Christ. Look at what it says here. How long are you going to kick against the pricks? And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. I believe that sometimes we need to know what our purpose is. And I believe that the purpose that was upon the Apostle Paul to teach and to minister to the Gentiles is also the purpose that God has appointed to us, even Jesus, when he was uh, leaving the earth. He said, go you into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. And I think sometimes we fail to see that we have a prejudice about ourselves where that we want to only share with certain people. We want to only engage with certain people, the word of God. But I believe that we have a responsibility with the word of the Lord to touch every life that we come in contact with in some way. I've often said and prayed in, in my life, I've, I've said, Lord, if, if someone rejects you because of something I have said, let it be because they have truly seen you. Because a lot of times our little idiosyncrasies our little quirks, our own little ways of doing things can hinder the message of someone being saved, the way that we respond to people. Well, you know, that's just the way that I am. Well, then get over yourself and submit yourself to God because it's no longer the idea, well, I'm going to do my own thing my own way. We have to be in submission to God in order to bear fruit. And the word of the Lord says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and appointed you 
and ordained you that you should go forth and that you should bring forth much fruit and that that fruit would remain. And I believe this evening that God would have us to have remaining fruit. And when you talk about fruit, a lot of people talk about bananas and apples and pears. That's not the kind of fruit that he's talking about. The fruit of our life represents the gospel of Jesus Christ or the power of his spirit. When you're talking about spiritual fruit, you're talking about love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, self-control. But listen, the apostle Paul was in that place at that moment, he was sharing with King Agrippa, he says, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but something got a hold of me. He says, this is what the Lord said to me. I am Jesus who you persecute, but rise and stand upon your feet for I have appeared unto you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen and of the things in which I will appear unto you. In other words, I'm going to show you some things that are getting ready to come. Delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles and unto whom I will send you. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. I believe that God has given us an opportunity and a purpose to be fulfilled to lead the lost to righteousness, to take them out of darkness into light, and to expose them to the presence of God. I believe that with all of my heart. How effective are we doing that? I don't believe that we're to uh, uh, try to find out a new and uh, uh, new, new, new way of, of doing things. I don't think that we're needing to, to, to look for something else to uh, appease people. I believe that the gospel message of Jesus Christ, uh, preached plain and in truth and in love, still is effective. And I believe that we, through the testimony of Jesus Christ, can be effective when we submit ourselves to God. The purpose is this, don't tire Don't grow weary in well-doing. For in a time that you think not, you're getting ready to receive the harvest. I believe with all of my heart there are times where people get discouraged because of the things that are going on around us. And I believe that that's uh, uh, something that everybody goes through. I I can tell you this. There are times where that I have to encourage myself. Because I'm not waiting on somebody to call me and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. I wanted you to know that I I love you and and blessed by what you do and everything's going great. I've had a pastor do that for the last two Sundays. I don't know, some of you may have seen him, but a pastor friend of mine, I I love him like a brother. uh, But he has been coming every Sunday morning. He meets me right here at this church. As soon as I get here, he's here. And, and he leaves his congregation for about 45 minutes to an hour to come here and pray for me. He said, I just feel like that you're going through some things. Nobody even is aware of what you're going through, but I feel by the Spirit uh, that I'm to come and pray for you. And I can't tell you how much encouragement that is to me. That, that, that I've had people call me and say, you know what, Pastor? I, 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 this is not trying to spook you or scare you, but uh, uh, just, uh, and it wasn't like that you were here, but it was like you passed by me and I, was, uh, I even smelt your cologne. But I was prompted to pray for you. Can God do that? Yes, he can. I shared that with my wife and she says, oh my gosh. She said, just the the other night, just as I shared her that that thing you shared with me, just as I shared with her about uh, feeling like that I had passed by her, she, she said, oh my gosh, she said, that happened to me. She said, I had to get up and see if you were in the house. I believe that God will bring people to the forefronts of your mind to get you to pray and intercede. And just as you do that, God begins to give strength. Uh, And as we begin to intercede for those around us, God will empower us to do the work uh, that is set before us. It's important to pray one for another and encourage one another. But as the Apostle Paul is saying here, Jesus had the key intercessor. He says, I'm going to show you these things. I'm appointed you for this purpose to be a minister and a witness to these things delivering you from the people to open the eyes of those that have turned to darkness to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive the forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me and as he's telling king agrippa this he says wherefore o king agrippa i was not disobedient 
under this heavenly calling and vision. I want you to go with me, if you would, to the book of St. John. I want you to see this because in John chapter 14, this is what he says concerning these things. Philip said unto the Lord, show us the Father and it will suffice us. I believe that there are those even today that want to see Jesus. Well, just show me, show me that God's still working. The difficulties that we face sometimes derail our faith or cause us to wane from those things that we have been taught even from a child. But can I tell you today that he whose mind that has stayed in the Lord is kept in perfect peace and that while we suffer some things in this life and there's some heaviness that is upon us, if now, if need be, through manifold temptations, we're in heaviness uh, because of the temptations that we're facing. It is not worthy to be compared to the glory that is going to be revealed in us at the last day. Yes, there's times that there's baggage that you've got to pick up and move. And yes, there's times where that there's difficulties uh, to press in and believe God, uh, even when nobody else is standing with you. Uh, but can I tell you this, uh, when you have come to that experiential walk with God and the engrafted word of the Lord uh, is alive within you, this is what the scripture says. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known the Father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. In other words, because you have known me, you have known the Father. It should have been already that you've experienced him and known him because of the work's sake. But this is what he says. Philip saith unto the Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices. Jesus says, I have been so long a time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? Believest thou that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments." And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Now, this is the, 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 the part that I, I love so much because, you know, in my mind that is so short-sighted at times, in the frailty of this flesh, I don't know about you, but I have to deal with this flesh on a regular basis. I have to deal with the flesh on how I eat. I have to deal with the flesh on how I rest. I have to deal with the flesh on how I respond to people sometimes. And it's sometimes a difficult thing. And without the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, it is impossible to be pleasing to God. Because the flesh cannot please God. I've resigned that fact that your flesh will not please God. I don't care how you dance. I don't care how you shout. I don't care how you run the aisles. The flesh cannot please God. Period. It won't. Because the flesh man or the flesh nature is at enmity with God. It is born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And in order for it to line up, we have to mortify it through the spirit. And here's the key. Look at this. I love this part. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you shall know him, for he dwelleth with you. And I have this underlined in my Bible. It says, and shall be in you. I thank God this evening that through the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, I don't have to find the anointing at, at appropriate times, but I can walk in the anointing of God continually. I took some bread over to some folks at where I work over at the newcomers. Uh, and one of the ladies said to me, said, Mark, you, you just... All the time, so refreshing. Every time you walk in the room, it seems like that all, just all, all hell can be breaking loose and you can walk in the room and everything just quietens out and smooths out. 
I said, well, I can tell you this, it's not me. She said, well, I can tell you this, we need more of the of people like you. But listen, we can diffuse things or we can infuse things. We can, we can bring peace to a situation or you can pour gasoline on the fire. And the responsibility of the child of God operating in the power of the Holy Ghost uh, is not to bring warlike messages uh, in problematic areas, uh, but to bring peace and deliverance to the captives. When we come to that understanding, we will begin to see that it is no longer I that does, does anything, but it's Christ that does the work in us through the comforter, the paraclete. He that is within us. Look at what it says, and shall be in you. I have that underlined in my Bible. And I will not leave you comfortless. And I, I like that because it says in my margin that word comfortless means orphans. Will not leave you fatherless. Talk to a, a fellow today and he says, you know, he says, my, my dad was never really a dad to me, but my granddad was. He's going through some situations and difficulties in his life right now. And he says, if I could just sit and talk with Pap. And I said, what you need is a talk with the master. Because he will not leave you as an orphan. And he says, well, I just don't know if I even believe that. He said, but I, go, I sure do get a lot of comfort out of talking to you. So I said, if I had a Bible, I'd show you something. Because in John's gospel, the scripture says in John chapter 17, this is what it says. Neither pray I for these alone. Verse 20, Jesus is praying to sanctify the believers that follow after his word. He says, I, in 20 he says, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words that they may all be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. The whole purpose of what God wants to do is the law of reproduction, because the Scripture says, had the princes of this world known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Jesus said, and shall be in you, and I will not leave you comfortless or fatherless or as an orphan. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but you see me. Because I live, you also shall live. And at that day, you shall know that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. And he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. I don't know about you, but when I begin to understand what Jesus was speaking of, I have to go to the book of Acts to show this to you, because the scripture says that as Jesus began to minister and to teach, how many know that in his own hometown he did not many miracles because of their unbelief? How many believe today that you don't see signs, wonders, and miracles because of our unbelief? I believe that sometimes we overlook the miraculous in search of the spectacular. Because I witnessed a miracle today. I laid hands on a little boy that was in pain, so where the, he was sobbing and crying, holding back tears. And within that quick, God transformed the pain to where that he was ready to eat pizza. Isn't that what he said? Well, to let me know he's home this afternoon. You, you witnessed that prayer, didn't you? And you prayed with us as, as, as God moved on him, and within three minutes he went to the bathroom, didn't he? he? Told his mom, boy, prayers really does work. Now here's what was going on in my spirit as I saw this little boy hurting and, and in pain. I had to make a conscious decision, didn't I? Because a whole lot of people just put hands in their pockets and say, well, call the nurse and maybe they'll get you something. The Word of God says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is what I was thinking. Lord, if you don't touch this boy, he's not going to have faith. He's not going to experience that God can heal. God says, don't you worry about that. Never mind the mule, just load the wagon. You go on and pray and I'll do the work. 
And see, a lot of times we will not pray because we're afraid, well, what if it doesn't work? Or what if it doesn't happen? I've heard great men of God. I've heard uh, uh, men like R.W. Schambach, and I've heard uh, uh, men like uh, Kenneth Copeland, and I've heard men like, uh, what's, what's the fellow that preached the message, uh, forgive and be healed? Dwight Thompson. He said that many times he's gone in and prayed for people, and they've gotten worse. He says, does that mean you quit praying? No. That means you continue to pray, believe, and believe God for the miraculous. This is the purpose that God has in our lives to do the work of the ministry and to act in faith, not being moved by what we see or hear or feel. There's times that you'll pray for people and not feel anything and then walk away healed and delivered. But I believe that we need to expect God to move. I don't know, early in, in when we first arrived here in this uh, building, there was a man that came here, and he had a large tumor right here on his neck. And he had it covered, and it was, it was just dripping. And he was going into the VA hospital the next day. And his wife brought him here because they had been to church, to church, to church, getting prayer for this guy. Because they said if it didn't, something didn't happen, that he was going to die of this throat cancer. He stood right here. We laid hands on him and prayed. I drove out to the VA hospital where he was supposed to be, and he wasn't there. I thought, Man, this is faith. Oh, he must have died. Three months pass. I hadn't heard anything. This fellow comes in, and his neck was as clean and normal as mine, and I didn't recognize him. And after the service, he walked up and he says, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, I, I guess I don't. He said, I was the guy that you had that big thing on his neck. Remember? And I did. Immediately, I recognized him then. He said, I went to the hospital. And the thing just dried up and went away. And he said, it was biopsied and everything. It was cancer. And he says, I'm totally healed. No cancer. So a lot of times you may pray for somebody and not feel anything. But believe God, it's coming. Now, I don't think that we're to get to the point where that we're pray only if we feel like it. We're to pray with expectancy, believing God for whatever the need. In Acts chapter 1, the scripture says, The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus both began to do and to teach. How many know that not everybody received his teaching? As a matter of fact, when he moved in, it was much like the Apostle Paul. There was either a revival or riot. And generally, it was those that caused a great stir as Jesus began to minister. Jesus, as he began to touch through the lives of people, the Scripture says that not everybody believed, and there was many that did not believe. Even his own disciples, when he would begin to teach, like, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, he would say, they would say to themselves, how can this thing be? And the scripture says that 70 disciples left and never walked again with the Lord. And Jesus turned to the 12, and I believe that he stared Peter right in the eye. He said, are you also going away? And Peter said, to whom shall I go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And I believe that when times get difficult and problems arise in our life, that's exactly where we have to stand. To whom shall I go? There are going to be times in each of our lives where that we're going to face difficulties, tragedies, and instances in our life that we would like to run as fast as we could run. But there will also be found knowing to whom are we going to go. He has the words of eternal life. Thank you for tuning in today to A New Life in Christ, a radio ministry of Agape Family Worship Center. We hope you've been blessed by this message and encouraged to pursue a deeper relationship in Christ. Please feel free to contact us or visit us at Agape Family Worship Center, 4111 Maple View Drive, Beaver Creek, Ohio, 45432. Sunday service, 11 a.m., Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Until next week, God bless you is our prayer.